by then. So no spoilers. I won't tell you what the time is. All right. I'm, I, the only thing, the only clues you have is is a PB. It's a pre-recorded one, by the way. That's why I'm commentating this alive over it. The PB itself doesn't have commentary. I just played uh, without mic. And well, the only spoiler is that it is a soup 39 at least. That's the only spoiler. I'll, I'll give. Got some bug wall there, a little bit of that. I was trying to do uh, goofy stuffs on the first uh, cutscene because there's nothing to do. You have a fixed amount of frames there. There's no way to skip that or make it faster. You can't wait faster. <laughs> Should I just swag a little bit? Kind of a black clock. <laughs> Wasn't the best clock ever. I don't remember everything about the run. I remember some parts. So... I guess it, it, I will be reacting most of the time. To think that once I could not see beyond... I actually like that. So Pius is is really at this point for me, Pius and Elia, I go kind of autopilot. Because I know the strats very well and I it's it's really just I played them so many times. It's really just that. <laughs> More than anything else. And fair enough, Pius is it's kinda easy. Definitely the easiest chapter. I didn't got the fast pick up there, sadly. But I, I had a, a good turnaround at least because I'm turn around, I'm making turnarounds with X. But I, I, I got the Celta one, which which now is kind of trivial because you just gotta match the button. <laughs> it used to be pretty tricky, but now it's it's easy. Got a nice far wheel from there. That turnaround was a little bit slow, but it's fine. And then you sell the block. I always have problem with this message because you're you're walking forward and as soon as you see the message you gotta scroll down and then as soon as you press B you gotta go forward again I, I just I'm not very good at it and then here on the button uh, neutral attacks on target attacks have this property of going automatically to an enemy so you can do an attack before the button and you'll turn around during the button animation giving you a very nice angle for later so you don't have to turn around manually later so that's overall a good pious golden pious is like four four ten so I, I expect to get I cannot say what was I'm happy with beginning. below 415 really on Pius. More than 415, I feel like it's kind of bad, but I usually still go because I usually keep running until either I get killed on Anthony or I get a crash on Kareem. So 
to. Okay, we attack this zombie four times. And that leaves the zombie uh, with enough HP to die on one more attack. So we target there. I did an attack there before doing the puzzle. And then you pause and that reactivates your attack. So you can kill the zombie during that uh, the, the puzzle solving. And that way those two cutscenes are kind of played together. It saves a bunch of time. But it's not a whole lot. It's like... If you do it not optimized, it's always like two seconds. And it can be like three if you go for a, a better fight. A little sneak there is to to prevent the traps from hitting you. And it helps with stamina. Because otherwise Elia gets tired. There's a similar trick we can do on this room, but it's not worth it on this fate. This is made on Oyoth. It's worth on other fates where you get a, a weaker zombie on that part. Chatoria zombies are just too strong. Really. There's also a, a teleportation glitch on that room. I, I mean, sharing the, the two rooms of zombies, but it doesn't work, sadly. <laughs> it's, it would have been like a very cool glitch and it would have saved a lot of time. Like you teleport from one room to the other because that's what the cutscene does, you know? The cutscene goes from one room to the other and you can actually, your character is on the other room. It's just, you can't move it. But there is a glitch that allows you to move the character the problem is that the spawn position of the character is far away from one of the loading zones and when you go farther away than a loading zone there's an invisible wall behind the loading zone so you're basically trapped behind an invisible wall and you can't do anything <laughs> it just sucks like you're so fucking close to the loading zone There's a bunch of teleportation glitch actually in the game, but none of them are useful so far. There's one that had a lot of potential on Alex. Okay, so that happened there. That's kind of bad. I I think the best thing I can do for for that part is just sneaking more on the on the smasher. So that gives more time to the zombie because I'm I'm getting caught a lot there. That's not very cool. It's just an unnecessary time loss on Alien. <laughs> also kind of bad sneak there. <laughs> I got hit several times. It just shouldn't happen. Okay, so no effect here. If you got a good Elia, uh, or kind of an optimal Elia, you're gonna have an effect on that room. And the only effects that will really activate it will be the quote unquote good ones. The ones that don't reset the room, because the, the ones that reset the room don't work on that room. Just don't activate, never. So you actually won one of the bad ones. And yeah, you see minus 8 from that bad area. 
That's because the, the early of my previous PD was... That was really bad. Way worse than that one. I suppose pick up... So yeah, that's why I switched back to the other strat. Because it's really just easier to get the fast pickup. I tried my other strat for a while, but I, I ended up switching back to this one. You just gotta trust your movement. Oh my god, what is oh, it? What this devil's work. We should get out of here. You have proven what we have feared the most. Oh, that turnaround was long. <laughs> On the corner. Yeah, it's part of Anthony's pretty standard. There's not a lot of two. I, I hit a wall there. That's why it went a little bit slow on, on a part. When you go too close to walls, your character starts walking. It stops running for a couple. Like I said before, I'm switching to doing pickups with Sneak. Going for a hybrid, I guess, I can call it a hybrid claw method using my index for the X button. Because you have, I mean, you, you kind of need two fingers on those buttons. Miss input there. Oh, also, during my entire session, I, I played the entire day yesterday. Al almost the entire day. I played a lot. And during most of the session, there was a fucking fly in my room. <laughs> and it got me nuts. Like. <laughs> Also, I'm grabbing that thing without turning around. I I'm not sure if that is better or worse. But since you got the pause there, the turnaround after that, it's not really hard or, or anything. Because the camera is already set up. So I don't feel like that turnaround is completely necessary before grabbing the thing. Flight problems there too. Yeah, it's super annoying. Flies are so annoying. And yeah, you can kill that zombie with either a torch or just your sword. I, I, I never really uh, went for the sword for some reason. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna start doing that. There, I don't think there's any difference. So this is a long lynch. We make a mix at the door and get hit and I think I don't I still don't fully understand how it works this was discovered by another player by sir but doing the mix um, puts your character in a very weird state and that makes that your next your animation will last uh, into the next room, if you go into the next room. And so that's why we got hit by the zombie. Because that's like the longest animation we have. And then you, you can, the, the next room won't load the cutscene immediately until your animation is done. So that gives us time to, to make a pause, make a spell, and then you can do a, an enchant item. And if you do an enchant item into a cutscene, into most cutscenes, not all of them, you can move in the cutscene. So you skip all that puzzle of the arms. 
because you get to the door before it closes. <laughs> I mean, the, the game is very nice, and it, it actually has, like, the collision of the door actually disappears, and you can just pass, you know, there's no invisible collision or anything. <clears throat> Though there is some positioning after the trick, because otherwise you're gonna land far away from the loading zone. And let's see how good the horror skip was. Oh, first try on that. That's very good. And then, kind of a slow setup. I'm, I'm still very slow at the setup. Oh, I failed that one. Yeah. So I sneaked back. I was very afraid of hitting the loading zone. I mean, the trigger. And I got it second try. But it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine because I got first try on the, on the library. There's a lot of layers to that <laughs> trick, but what we're basically doing is we're doing an attack while popping up attacks at the same time. And the character moves during the text. So when you get rid of the text, your character is farther away from the trigger. So you can just keep going and you never activate the trigger. It's like a short explanation to it because there's more layers but so right now after using items or after a pause or after a cutscene where I immediately need to to press a prompt, Dreams. like a ladder or a door. Psychology. Now I switch to just matching A and B alternatively, because it's it's kind of the faster method for me at least to match like this, and it's the the healthiest one for my fingers at least. And if I happen to hit A before B, uh, then that's nice. Because we're gonna have a, an attack on the door. And if I don't, it's fine still, because I'm still just matching, you know? Here's an exception though, because I I like to get that one. You have to target to get that one fast. And that one too, you also have to target there. Otherwise, you're never gonna get it. Or you're gonna get it, but super slow. Because Karim tries to... When you do an on-target attack, Karim turns around to the to a certain enemy. And that takes too much time. It takes more time than the, the, the ladder prompt. I don't think I got the enchantment here. Yeah. That thing is frame perfect, and very, very few times it might be two frames, but it's usually frame perfect. I know that sounds weird, but it's it's because of how the, the character moves. It kind of depends on which frame of your running animation you are when you're gonna land on the, on the trigger. That's why I say, like, very few times it can be two frames window. It's usually one frame. A wacky movement is to trigger attacks from the zombies. So they move less on the next time I'm gonna be on that room. Three attacks on the two war. From behind, one from the front. And then we kill with a chagram at the same time we open the door. And that skips the death animation of that fucker. Then you try to do a spell there on this cutscene, but it's frame perfect too. You're most likely gonna fail that. But it's fine because there is another cutscene later. The important thing is to really get rid of your chagrams. And since you're gonna do that pause anyways, uh, 
you try to go for that. That's the cutscene I could have hit. I didn't. And I also moved early. <laughs> I should have let that spell finish. So yeah, that's one of the first um, mistakes of the run, I'll say. That's another one. I, I switched target there. I think because I... I let go R a little bit. I think if you do when you do that you can switch targets. It was just dumb. <laughs> That's just swag right there. And yeah, all the cinematics here are to despawn the dying zombies. When a zombie is dying, ready to be finished, uh, you can see a cutscene and it makes the zombie disappear. We're gonna do the same thing here. No, actually not. No, that's gonna be for later. You can get rid of these zombies too, watching a cutscene. But here I want a no magic message to be able to move on this cutscene. And I'm actually killing enemies right there without the camera. So there's some tricky movement there that you gotta do without seeing what's happening. There I freaked out. I just completely forgot what I have to do. <laughs> so you get rid of all those enemies without cutscene. Then you put a different enchant, and here I fucked it up. I think I move. No, I just cancel it. I was matching A, but I hit B by accident. Right, I was still on time to merge the enchant with the cutscene, so it's fine. Yeah, that was a tricky part. I think I remember seeing those fuggers kind of close to the ladder. And I think I adjusted my movement, sneaking there a little bit. Then here, we're gonna see if we have Explosion. So toward Talisman. And then the next pause, uh, if the tali Talisman doesn't go down in numbers, uh, you have Explosion activated. And if it goes down, you doesn't have it. And that's important, it's gonna be important for later. Because we got a branch on the, on the strats, whether you have that activated or not, and it's random, really. You can't control if you're gonna get it or not. But you can know if you get it or not, so it's fine. Oh, there I finish a lot of enemies with chakras because it's faster. Then watch a cutscene, get rid of those. And cast a spell and then just repeat for, for the other phases. So all of those are normal zombies. And then on the next one there's gonna be a, a bone thief. The one farther on the right is not a real zombie. So we don't care about that one yet. Be sure to always cast the spell after this, uh, the Bone Thief. Otherwise you can be fucked. So that skips the, the dying of the horror. Then no magic message into cutscene to move in this cutscene. So I also move there. The move is... Movement is a little bit tricky because uh, this game doesn't have time controls <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep repeating that because there's still people that think that for some reason <laughs> it doesn't so when we play on cutscenes the camera is 
on a completely different place uh, that is not intended, so your controllers kind of suck and really you just have to memorize what you have to do and they, they won't make sense basically, that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> Dogs are sanity effect, by the way. <laughs> There's gonna be a bunch of those in my stream. I can actually mute a little bit. I'm gonna mute a little bit. And there's not a lot of commentary in the next part. I will not argue that I was shocked by the sudden mention. So little, little mistake there, but nothing relevant. I just matched B too many times, so I got rid of the message. And here, I almost shoot my gun. Because what you do there is, you press B, and then you slide from B to A, to just do all those inputs faster. But sometimes I fucked up, and I don't press B twice or something like that, so I press B accidentally, I mean A. And that's a shot, but you have enough time to just save that here. No death cancel, sadly. Um, if the angle of this horror is different, you can align your shots with the door and skip that dead animation. But it's kind of random because it depends on how the horror behaves. There's not too much we can do about it without losing time. It's usually faster. If, if you don't get the proper angle, just do a normal kill, really. And the main reason uh, of that is you do double damage to horrors from behind. So you want an angle where you can shoot the horror from behind. And you are close to the door. The spell can be done into the cutscene, but it's frame perfect too. Just like the Kareem one. So I usually don't get that. <laughs> and also, it's, if you're gonna fail it, it's better to fail it before the cutscene than after the cutscene. So I usually go early. I don't care too much about not getting that one in particular. Or rather, I want to get it, but I don't want to fail it the other way, where you lose more time. This was one of my worst menu on this part. <laughs> Just because, like, that's good menu for late game, because I still don't memorize late game very well. But on this part, I usually go way faster than that. We do our recovery there to skip our sanity effect incoming. I don't remember the threshold, I think it's like 100. But I don't know, there is a threshold where if you go into this well and you have less sanity than that threshold, you see a sanity effect. Now, let's skip there, shoot a zombie and took the ladder at the same time. You can do an enchantment into that barrier, but if you fail it, it doesn't matter. It's still faster to, like, uh, to don't do any enchantment. So you, you either get it on the barrier or just go without enchantment. Then 
I'm almost sure the Guardian wasn't um, the best. I think it went to a, a difficult position after the, the first shots. Yeah, yeah, I want to. That's always a bad position. Just go to the sides because you gotta run until here. Um, there's invisible walls in the bridge, so you can't really hit the guardian from the bridge uh, if it's to one of those sides. You always want the guardian to go towards you or towards towards end guy entrance. That spell there is to skip a sanity effect. You only need to cancel this the spell to skip it. <clears throat> right here we do field the new star. Of the of any percent um, damage field is a spell that was regarded as useless the from the very beginning of the speedrun of this game. Though Sir just a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks, I don't remember exactly how much time already. Discover something you can do with field. And that's gonna be important on this episode, this chapter. So we, we run to the corner there to de decoy the the gatekeeper a little bit. So it's far away and we can use the, the barrage. Otherwise the game tells you it's too dangerous to use it. But it actually only cares about distance of enemies. There's like a radius around the thing. He doesn't care if there is enemies on the room, actually. Just how close they are. And right here, there's a skip I could be doing. But it's too hard. And I feel like it's too random, too. At least for me, because I can't master it. It saves like 27 seconds, if you get it. And if you don't get it, I, I guess you lose like a minute. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how much you will lose. Probably more than a minute. So I'm not implementing that on runs yet. And I don't know if I will ever implement it on Uyauth at least. Because we gotta use an Uyauth zombie and those suck for the for the trick. On other fates we have like sell a zombie, that's you have like two tries at the trick. Here you have one try and then you're fucked up. Got the worst sneaking patterns here. I just totally forgot I need to sneak. Alright, good zombies. And I keep doing the long one. I it's I just can't learn. <laughs> and here comes the skip. So a zombie grabs you. You get a you put a wall, uh, and the wall has collision. So when you get rid of the zombie, the zombie pushes you into the wall, and you clip inside. And then a little bit of movement will get you inside the loading zone. I'm not sure why I finished that spell there, because <laughs> I probably didn't need to, but whatever. Maybe I thought I got the barrier. <laughs> so that, that zombie clip allows us to skip a bunch of items and a dispel 
and what else? Like a horror. It's a lot of just a bunch of backtrack. Okay, I failed with one, and I tried again because I really wanted that. Like right now, I have, I actually have a road uh, without the button, but I just wasn't feeling like I want to play that. So maybe I'm losing time there, but whatever. <laughs> so, remember, we have explosion activated. That means I can only do recoveries as far as my sanity is over 50%. So we're gonna keep doing recoveries, red recoveries, because uh, that gives back stamina. That's the only reason we're doing them. And I'm gonna stop doing then, and I'm gonna switch to sneak as soon as my stamina drops from 50%. Because from there, uh, a finished recovery will make explosion on your character. And we don't want that, not just because it's a time loss, but because we want to use that explosion later. It's like a very important part of the run, of the entire road, actually. So here I have less than 50%, and I forgot to sneak there. I need to sneak a little bit on that ladder uh, stairs. That's why Lindsay is gonna get tired. Shouldn't be completely tired here. And here too. Like you you're gonna see him getting tired. So that's that that is tired. So a little bit of a mess up there. So from here I am kinda reacting <laughs> to sneak. <laughs> And on this room, there's gonna be an effect activated. So it's gonna activate either here or on the next room. So I do a recovery there, and I cancel it immediately. When you cancel things running, uh, you don't even see the, the spell. I need to make this spell here. I'm still not very used to that. That's why this... It's rather slow. And from here you have pool. And tutorial pool grants you infinite stamina basically. So you can run without sneaking forever. It's just broken. Yeah, and you see my, my magic is dropping from time to time. It drops every time I do um a Celta recovery. Are you commenting a live run? I'm commenting a pre-recorded run I got yesterday. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I got this offline yesterday and I'm commenting live on it. So the reason why I keep doing recoveries is because um, Every time you do a recovery, uh, there is a list on this game that is like the next effect you're gonna get. And every time you do a recovery with your sanity below 50%, the next effect will be set up as explosion. Okay? Recovery explosion. And that overrides the effect you were gonna get before. So I'm doing the same thing here. It overrides it for 10 seconds. So every time I, I do a spell, you see my magic dropping down, I have 10 seconds without any effect. And that's the way we manipulate the, the sanity effects on this game. And why there is like 
a lot less RNG than it used to be in the past. How is No Sphere Grid going? Well, I hadn't done anything on No Sphere Grid in a while. <laughs> like I, I still, I still have my documents and all that. I, I, I remember grinding for like three months early this year on Dark Anima, but it just didn't didn't work. <laughs> During the time of the Inquisition. I didn't even got a lot of damage on Dark Anima, like uh, none of my runs, which were like hundreds of attempts, none of them got over 500k on Dark Anima <laughs> from the 4 million, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just luck fest, really. It's It's crazy. But really, when you get a good run, uh, or good attempt on Dark Anima, you're likely gonna get it, more or less. But getting that good attempt is very hard, because you need the sisters to do haste immediately, and that doesn't happen too much. One time I got uh, Sandy to do haste immediately, and then I did um, do it again, I don't remember what's the name of the command. But basically to repeat the action and she was she just decided to take a break <laughs> that's so stupid all right so the, the poll is a chapter that has a lot of parts where not a lot is happening right there um, I switched to do this pull here when you don't get it on the cutscene, you can do it here because it helps with your turnaround on that little part. Uh, the camera gets reversed when you go from the passage to this little oh, room. Brother Luther, not a moment so your controllers soon. get reversed too as well. And the pool helps with that inconsistency in the controller. So for him, it's, it's really just running. Since we have the pool, uh, that's infinite stamina. And we gotta do like, we gotta check on some items. We gotta get the crossbow, the keys, and some pages. Let's meet those, those dogs. I was yelling at the dogs. Uh, what do the numbers next to splits represent? Okay, uh, what that means is the amount of times I've done that split. Like the amount of times I completed that split successfully. So basically on heresy, which is this chapter, it says 38. So out of my 116 attempts of speedrunning this game, only 38 runs have completed, have been completed until this chapter, like after this chapter. And with that you can kind of calculate how many runs have died there, which is uh, total runs minus that. So here we do um, we do an, a no magic message before a cutscene, before entering a room. And that allows you to, and just like on the Anthony thing, we can enter the cutscene with an animation and do a spell to cancel the cutscene. So we basically just harass Anthony here because we, we punched him <laughs> while he was lying down, which is not normal. 
doesn't normally happen. And here, the cutscene's still there. So you gotta be cautious to don't hit that trigger. That's why the movement was kind of not optimal there. Because I need to get close to the door, but not that close. And the camera doesn't help, really. And if you open the door and active the trigger at the same time, which can happen uh, if you go too fast, uh, you'll get a soft lock. And you are trapped in the cutscene forever. So you better go slow there, or safe rather. So then here I have the crossbow. Uh, we can load the weapon while we do a spell. As far as you load before doing the spell, it doesn't cancel the spell. And it just works with some weapons. Uh, namely the crossbow and fling lock from Max. So then here, uh, there's an incoming trick here, which is frame perfect, and I never got this trick. So we do two hits on the horror, and then we shoot the crossbow, and we pause on a certain frame, and that skips the death animation. And I got it. <laughs> I've got that on like two runs, including this one, I think. <laughs> like, I was pretty excited at, at that point. Because I actually didn't. I didn't notice I got it. Because you usually notice. Because you. If you pause and you hear the bolt of the crossbow, that means you got it. Uh, most likely, because there's still some positioning, it can still fail, but it means you can get it at least. But I didn't hear the ball that time. I don't know if it was me, or maybe it just didn't sound, not sure. And here, I tried to went for a backup, but then I realized that these fuckers look at you, even if you get rid of their head. <laughs> it's like one of the few things that I didn't knew about this game. Because <laughs> I thought that was a good backup. If you have no health, uh, just getting rid of the head so it doesn't look at you. Uh, but no, the, the green faggers look at you anyways. <laughs> but now I know. Yeah, and that's, that's only because we don't want to go low health. Otherwise your, your character starts going very slow. So I'm gonna go close to low health. I'm gonna be like 50% here, and that's that's still fine. And then killing those zombies saves time later because you go straight line, and it's it helps a little bit here with stamina because we don't want to cast a pool immediately. Pulls might give you infinite stamina, but you still lose a little bit of time casting them, so doing as few as possible is still better. And I fucked up there, because I tried to went too fast. <laughs> I have a very nice strat to do that with two hands, but like sometimes I go too fast and it just doesn't work. Oh yeah, and by the way, the big time save on the previous chapter, that's because of the new trick. Uh, the zombie clip we did on Dinsey, it's pretty new. I haven't finished a run I mean, I finished a run yesterday, but before that, I hadn't finished a run with that, so it's not included in my uh, splits, and that's why I saved so much time on that one. And that it's why it's a goal, because it wasn't the best Lindsay at all, but Augustine all along. of course it's gonna go with the new stuff. So here, we do a no magic message, but with a, with a recovery. And that, it's a similar effect to just casting the recovery. Just casting the recovery 
like we talked about before, gives you the mm, uh, explosion, and get, that gets rid of FX for 10 seconds. But if you do it with a no magic message, basically depleting your magic entirely, uh, with a recovery, you get a whole minute of no FX. It's like kind of broken. Uh, like the only thing you're trading for that is your entire magic. But there's a lot of parts where you can do that. So for you to know, uh, runs before these were like very luck based. There's still a lot of RNG. But we at least get rid of most effects this way. And it's really amazing. Like, <laughs> just getting rid of. RNG elements is great in general. You don't need to kill that zombie, but it helps for stamina, so it's fine. Because we need a little bit. Back in the day, we used to cast a pool here, but it saves more time to recover stamina, sneaking a little bit. And casting a shield, which is gonna be useful. So the, the shield allows me to go between the horrors there. So that I already so saved some time from an older road here where I go around them, not directly. And sometimes they still don't hit you. And if they don't hit you, you can use the shields for the trappers. There I wasted that shield there for better movement because it's just one shield. I need like two shields for the for the bone thieves. Not the trappers, the bone thieves. So if I have just one I'll waste it uh, there. And if I have like five I'll do it too. And yeah I remember this. This was pretty bad. <laughs> it's something that can't happen. The strike is pretty good, but it's not perfect. So I try to move them a little bit with a uh, with a cutscene, because that repositions enemies. I don't think I move them at all, but I think I reset their attack, letting me do an attack myself <laughs> without going. The, the most important part there is, of course, not dying, but also not going low HP, because you're gonna go too slow. So I, w I was like um, very concerned about that. <laughs> very, so that that's like a bad part of this, and that's probably the only reason why this didn't go, or did it? I don't remember if it go. Okay, it go for one second. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, like zero point seven. That this is a very unoptimized chapter because that could have been a lot more. Just because, like, uh, I got the frame perfect trick. I don't know when that's gonna happen again. <laughs> but yeah, from here on, all my splits are not optimized. Uh, so goals from here are easier and not that crazy, you know? Like, I fucked it up again. And that's because there has been too many changes to late game. So I just and also a lot more runs die on early chapters now. Meaning I have less tries at late chapters to do goals, you know. Okay, so here we're gonna get into this corner. Summon a zombie. And this is probably the biggest trick of this game. Shouts to Sir for discovering this. You enter the bathroom, you go out, and that repositions Alex enough to get into the into the wall and into this cutscene, which is a way later cutscene. I got totally confused here. 
because new assignments on the road. And yeah, this allows you to skip Edward entirely. It's just broken. Like that that trick saves 20 minutes. Basically. Much has been written about the exploits of conquerors. From like uh the road of I, I don't know, two months ago, one month ago? Probably two months. And it's the whole reason why this game is sub two hours now. I was close to get sub two hours, but I I still needed some more stuff. But then Sir discovered that. <laughs> And I got two, two, two hours free. Roberto has a little adjustment here from the last PB. Uh, this is a new road that it, it's rather old. It was an idea from Sir too, from a while ago. But I, I was hesitated against it because you have to gamble on getting one sanity effect or not. Though it saves about four to five seconds if you don't get one. So it's still kind of worth. I mean, it depends on how much you want to bet. If you get the, the worst sanity effect, you're, you're gonna lose 20 seconds. Okay, there I need to walk. I keep doing that. I need to walk a little bit when the hand activates. Not keep, don't, don't keep running. I sneak a tiny bit there, just because of the trapper. And no effects. If you're gonna get an effect, you're gonna get it on this room. Actually, there is the effect, but it's a good one. Yeah, there's a, a bug in the, in the TV in the screen. I think for, for like one second I thought that was the fly that was annoying me on the room. <laughs> but now it's just bugs. And this is the main difference. Uh, you get into this room. Uh, you summon a zombie. My position here, I thought it was bad. But it turned out well. No, actually it's kind of bad. The zombie can be summoned closer. So I walk a little bit extra here for safety. You can let go of the zombie and it will keep walking either infinitely or a little bit. And while it's walking, you can cast a spell. And then the spell is going to be finished during the cutscene. So that's like the main time save of this road. Like we have to do that spell in a cutscene. But it can be scary sometimes because uh, the fire might stop before the smasher. If you run, it will do it always because it's gonna notice you and it's gonna turn around. But if it don't see you, it might still randomly stop after a few steps. Here there's a little adjustment I have to do, that that walk there is very bad, and also I need to do a nomadic message on Kareem, uh, on the Kareem room, because I got this, I totally forget about that, I'm not supposed to get an effect here, but that that's get uh, repaired with a nomadic message, it's just an adjustment I need to do. Now the good thing was it was that spell, I mean that sanity effect, which is fine. We're still gonna see that, but I don't want to see that that early. You usually see it here, and it's fixed it on this on this transition, and that's good because every time you see an effect, you're gonna have. A free minute without FX. So we actually want to have that thing there. So it helps us until the end. 
so I need to adapt here. <laughs> I remember my adaptation wasn't the best, I think. Yeah, shield, trapper, I was pretty slow there. Oh yeah, okay. So instead of assigning trapper, I cast trapper. So uh, the first mistake. So I have no magic here to do a shield. But I was thinking, okay, whatever, let's just go with animation cancel. It's fine. I have enough HP. But then I, I got no stamina. Because yeah, we don't do animation cancel here, never. So I thought, oh fuck, I fucked it up. I can't reach the end <laughs> running at this speed. So alright, let's get enough magic for a shield. <laughs> it was like so bad. And I got some extra stamina there. That's it was the worst part of Roberto. And I go tired again. Base is under attack. Yo, thank you, buggy man. For the host. How are you doing, buggy man? Oh, I'm here. I think I. Okay, I, I have enough. Enough magic. I wasn't sure if I have enough magic. Power started me. Yeah, I think it's a little bit loud now because I, I adjusted some stuff and it might be a little bit loud, but I don't know. <laughs> Pretty stream, just a casual operation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's really just like I, I gotta say I know my channel will never grow with this but I kind of don't care at this point anymore I didn't know magic message there by the way just to be safe um, just doing commentary over pre-recorded runs is so less stressful and it's like I'm so relaxed right now it's crazy And then from here is just running until the end. We still do a pull for the end, but we just do one. On the previous road, we, we do two pulls at the end. And that's, that's the other part where this road saves time, basically. Just one pull instead of two. Yeah. And also, I think it, it kind of... I can get better quality... Um, commentary. If I only focus on comment, uh, commenting the run. So you see, that plus 7 over a good Roberto, that would be... In plus a lot more, I don't know, like plus 20 maybe even. Uh, but this is with the new road, and also the Roberto of my previous run, uh, run wasn't the best. So I can say a, a whole more time there. And here I was thinking, okay, this run is pretty good, and I really want to finish a run. You know, like at this point I just want an APB, because it's kind of a quote-unquote free wars, we with the new stuff. Type. So I was... For a moment, I thought maybe I can do a safe road on Peter. But then I just regret and I just stick to the new road. New road is uh, a lot more risky. Uh, just because I'd lost more runs to it. But then I thought, nah, we, we gotta get a run with all the new stuff. It's It just has to happen. So yeah, spoilers, this is new road, Peter. Everything is new here. Some stuff, uh, it's similar. The end is, is almost the same. Here I fucked up, 
I'm supposed to attack before that. But just things that happen. So we want to attack, uh, do that because we need to do a uh, reload. So here I spend some magic. I need a no magic message. I do a reload, no magic message. And then that allows me to do another reload and another, uh, I mean, another no magic message here. And that skips one cutscene. And you can call. I mean, it doesn't skip you. But you can move during the cutscene, that's the good part. A little recovery there, so we don't have effects. And then here, we need a trapper. There's a 7 frame trick here. That can be risky. If you fucked it up, I try go for it, but I just didn't got it. You can cancel that dead animation, basically. That's a no magic message. So, no recoveries. I mean, no effects. Until the end of the chapter. This is a rather short chapter, this one. Here, spell madness it was pretty slow there. The rest, the rest went better. I'm still getting used. We skip two spells, two seven spells right now. We don't do horror anymore, and we don't do seven pool anymore too. We just don't need them. So reveal invisible and sell the pool. And then use the penny. I didn't remember if I if I got that. Uh, you can like complete that spell during that cutscene, but if you do it too early or too late, you lose control. I mean, if you do it too late, you lose control of your character. Or rather, you you can actually keep moving, but you can't do spells. And I think you can pause too, probably. And if you do it too early, the cutscene doesn't activate. We gotta sneak a little bit there. Because we now skip one one shield. We used to do a five shield there. So that's like a four seconds uh, time save already. And we do less assignments too, so it's more and more time save. So from here, uh, the road is the same as the old one. You just gotta run, get a key, kill some trappers, and get to the final boss of this chapter. Not of the game. I sneak a little bit there, I really didn't want to lose this run. I play save on a, a lot of parts uh, from this point. We now shoot on this door because we don't need bullets for the end. Um, I don't know if I say it already, but attacking on doors it skips one animation and saves a couple frames. You see, every time you you open a door, you start the next room looking at the door because your your character is closing the door. So this is a turnaround that you gotta you gotta do to keep going. On most rooms, not all of them, but most, you gotta turn around. But if you attack before that, uh, you start looking at the center of the room, saving that turnaround. That's why I'm doing on all the the doors are there. 
I was uh, just being sure that I had all my assignments there. That's a completely extra pause. Just safe. And here's the the new Black Guardian. We don't kill the Black Guardian anymore. It's now skip. BG skip. So we gotta get to the window. You get to the corner, you summon a zombie. And for me, this might be one of the most stressful parts because of this fucking trick that is kind of hard to get. You do an attack, so that delays the zombie, then you do um, a field, and that hopefully gets you into the thing. But sometimes it doesn't work. There's a backup that might or might not work. I was very scared at that point, but I got it. <laughs> and you see how much time that saves. <laughs> it's, it's really crazy. It's definitely more than that. Just because my Peter was uh, wasn't perfect, but it was a good Peter overall. And if you get it on the first try, it's even better, of course. And at that time, I was so happy that I got that because I lost like three runs to that, three very good runs, and I was just excited and I completely forgot to do uh, a spell here, so I got that effect. And I also got it too close to the door, and when that happens, uh, the prompt of the door disappears. So you gotta go away from the door to make the prompt appear again. <laughs> so that's kind of a time loss there. And also from here, because I, I saw that thing, <laughs> I don't need to do recall race. Get the chug in here, very important. I, I keep forgetting that on some runs. And then we can open this thing. This is because we did the Edward skip late, uh, before, early. We got the item to unlock this thing very early in the game. You're supposed to beat Edward before you can do this. But we don't give a shit about it. Not anymore. So now we're gonna jump into Michael. But we need to get rid of this penny first. And do some assignments. And that's because if you go to the end of the game, you, you get to the last fight against Pius. And that fight does something with your items. It gets rid of several of your items. Not all of them. It, it keeps you with the weapons and the book. Uh, but I think something gets wrong with the cleaning when you have items that you're not supposed to have on that fight. So if you get to the fight with an extra item that you're not supposed to have, like that penny for instance, just used for the Edward page, uh, you get a soft lock, or a crash rather, on the last fight if you press start. And you definitely need a start to change your weapons. I mean, you can still beat the game without pressing start, but it's gonna be super slow. And you'll need uh, to enchant the Gladius and kill Pius with Gladius. Like, do a 7 enchantment, I guess, before the battle. So you can't pause. I'm really just using that penny. We're very close to the circuit to use the penny, so it's fine. Okay, I cancel that there. We use that message. We watch a cutscene that allows me to activate this thing again during the cutscene, and then I can move during this cutscene. And I can technically press B there immediately. But it's very dangerous. You can only do it if you're very fast. If you're not very fast, you gotta wait a little bit. Otherwise, you're gonna get a uh, soft lock. Though I'm still uh, saving time here. 
if you, you don't get the fast one, he still saves time. Just not as much. And we keep doing recoveries before every room so we don't get FX. Last one is gonna be in the middle of this room. There's another recovery right there. And then I'm finally doing this a little bit faster. <laughs> I can do that someone still faster. But I was just scared. But that one was still good, because the trapper summon got got summoned very close to the closet. Or obstacle, whatever it is. I was super scared of that trouble right there because it was right on uh, in my way. It's a very uncommon position for the trouble. But since it happened, it happened once. I I got more prepared to it, and now I I totally react to that. Don't just run straight. It's very s slow assignment because. I'm getting used to it still. It's a very new assignment. And this horror. I think it was like... It started on like 40... Oh, I don't remember where it started. I can see it on, on the stream. It started in 44 and it ended on... Like 1. So it's like 16 seconds. This was a very fast order. Let's see. No, it was even faster. It was like 14. Or 15, rather. 15 second horror is super fast. Like, this was probably about to be a, a goal at this point. But then I fucked up. <laughs> Spoilers. That's one of the things I remember. So I didn't know magic message there. Just keep a possible effect here. But I... I mean, not a no magic message, a recovery. But I kind of fucked it up because I didn't have enough magic for this. Then I watched a cutscene for no reason. And with all that done, I actually waste too much magic. And the main concern here is because the horrors were were too fast. I got less magic than normal. But that's still fine. I can still do my regular pull here because I need a Zelda pool to reach the end safely. And fast. So I I was going to do a pull here. And I did it, but I moved a little bit. So I cancelled the pool. And from there was like, I mean, I'm not gonna wait for the magic for another pool. So fuck it, let's go. Let's just keep going. I'm one damage away from low health. And I was hoping I could get a pool here. But I didn't have enough magic, sadly. I should have just walked a little bit for the magic. But I decided to go immediately. And that means uh, Michael starts going slow. I was actually afraid here that the horror could kill me. <laughs> that was actually pretty scary. <laughs> and yeah, I, I would probably save more time if I... If I wait a little bit to get the pool going, and then I don't have to go slow. Otherwise, this wouldn't be in a, a goal, probably. But it happens. I mean, um, as as soon as I got the Peter skip, 
I knew this would be the because there's there's no reason I'm gonna lose the run to Michael or Alex, but I was legit scared <laughs> at that last part. <laughs> So then we got the last Alex segment here. And there's no zombies. And that's because what triggers the zombies on last Alex is actually the... It's not the cutscene of Max, the servants, and Max. It's using the pickaxe. So even while I active, I triggered that cutscene. I didn't trigger the zombies because use, the usage of the pickaxe is what does that and we haven't used that at all we just completely skipped the pickaxe so that makes movement and sanity management way better here on on the house i mean there's not a lot of management but you're gonna get more sanity for the end at Pius, basically just a little bit more than the previous road. Like previous, previous, previous road before uh, Edward Skip. I keep doing my uh, recoveries to skip any effect, even the good ones. We need another pull to get over 50% sanity. Yo, sir, are you a tester using the Pikas after clipping in? Actually, no. <laughs> I, I guess it works. No, wait, I think I... No, no, I did it. I'm almost sure I did it. And I think it, it actives the, the zombies. Yeah, because the, the, the thing is still there. I mean, when you clip, when you go out, the thing is still closed. So I'm, I'm like, eighty percent sure you can use it. I don't remember if you get the cutscene though. I will say yes. I, I remember doing this a while ago, even before you discover the thing. When I was doing it with hacking. So maybe when we can take a look at it after uh, after the run ends, I guess, to see what's what's happened. How are you doing, sir? By the way. So now I have Enchant assignment here. You still got the boss of the spell. There's no way to avoid that with enchantments. But just save some time from going to the menu, the spell menu. So Alex also got a slight rewrote after, like the previous PV already has that. But before that, uh, in between that and the previous one, uh, Sir discovered another thing, which is the which skips three spells on Enga, which are summons. So that takes uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of space on your assignments. So Enga is really just like the, the whole optimization that Enga has on roading is always having enough stamina so you can always run with Alex, so no pulls. And also having good management of the shields. So most of the, of the exits on the main room uh, the long ones, you lose about 9 shields, 9 to 10 to 8, depending on how it goes. And then the short ones, you go from 4 to 5. And you have 14 shields every time you cast a shield. 
So that gives you some freedom to roam those different parts. Because a long trip plus a short trip gives you 14 more or less. Now this bind started on like... Oh, I don't remember. But I, I think I remember this bind being average. Yeah, it's like average. And then the other was probably faster. Yeah. Yeah, this is totally average. On Alex Pine. I forgot to sneak there. I sneak a little bit there and it actually was enough. I think. I mean, I don't remember this part right here. It was enough for that part, but... Yeah, I guess it, it was alright. And yeah, we used to, to do this part not exactly this part, but kind of doing this part twice before error skip. Uh, because the entire, not the entire, like two thirds of Edward episodes are on Enga. And it's, it's just like running around Enga, <laughs> watching some cutscenes and activating some levers. I'm so glad we don't have to do that again. Also, even for low spell, we don't have to do it because Edward Skip uses one spell, which is the zombie, and Edward Chapter also uses one spell. If it wouldn't be two, it would be, I guess, better because we save one. But being one instead of zero, it's wonderful because we can trade those two spells. Like if. If there is a way to skip the spell in Edward, then we would need to do Edward on low spells, sadly. <laughs> There's no way so far. And that was the last assignment of the run. I, I, I don't know if I needed to kill those two. I just played really safe at that point. I could have probably like shoot one and I guess run from the other. But you have two, two bullets to spare anyways. So like at this point I have the exact amount of bullets I need. I can't waste any bullet on portals, sadly, but... Here, a little bit of sneak run it was kind of bad at the end I got just scared <laughs> and he sneak a lot but you just tap X with a certain rhythm and because you uh, the game wants you to sneak that full part uh, that floor otherwise it activates a worm and a cutscene and it sucks though it doesn't register if you're sneaking every time you can like switch between sneak and run a little bit and it's fine but it has a certain rhythm if you wanted to optimize you can like match x if you want but it's gonna be like almost the same as just sneaking the whole thing i guess 
probably faster than Snake in the whole thing, but... And sadly, this barrier here doesn't behave as other barrier that we got later. Otherwise, we could just skip this with a, with a cutscene. And actually, a cutscene... Watching a cutscene would be um, slower than casting a spell. The, the only real uh, problem is that you cast a spell and then you see the attack cuts in. And that takes a lot. You know, the attack, the, the game shows you the attack getting the, the pillars. And that, that's the slowest part. Because yeah, 7 spell is, is less than watching a cutscene on your boss. Unless it's a pre-render, then it might be about the same time, or even faster, with a normal cutscene at least. That's the last bullet. As I say, you have two bullets to spare. And I need to calculate something here, because I can switch back to Gladius. But I don't know if it's worth it at this point, because there's not a lot of teleporters left. So it's only worth it if, if the time I can save with the Gladius is more than a pause, you know? Because I need to do an extra pause and menuing to equi equip the Gladius. There's just number five and number three left. And the door. Um, three more times. So I guess it's probably enough time to save if you don't fucked up everything, of course. Any teleporter. But I don't remember the time saves on each. This is the last shield. And I want to get Attic as much as as much as I can here. Like, there, sometimes there's a little glitch that I still don't know how it happened. I don't know if it is a glitch or just a odd behavior. Where you get like a, a big... Um, a big separation between two uh, shocks on the floor. I don't know why it happens. You don't want that to happen. You can't control it, by the way, <laughs> so far. But you don't want that to happen on this last part because we want to get rid of all the shields. You never want to get into Pius with a single shield. Otherwise Pius will do a 9 <laughs> dispel on Mantorak, which dispels everything instantly. He doesn't even cast the thing, it's just eats the cast. And it's level 9, like what the fuck. So here the rats scare the barrier and we can just pass because there's no barrier anymore <laughs> and that saves a lot of time. There are seven enchantments on the shotgun before Pius. That's just my personal preference. Because I'm not that good at doing animation cancel. And as far as I know, animation cancel can will not save that much time. Yeah, you can make bets at this point on what the time it's gonna be. I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this spies. What can I say about this spies? Uh, you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it by yourself. Alright, 
so that artifact is fixed. He's always on the same position. And then that happened. I got a far artifact on the very first uh, iteration. I was so mad. Like, I mean, at that point, it was like, whatever, because this is gonna be me anyways. But I was very mad because that never happens. Like, really. <laughs> you never got far artifact on the first one. <laughs> so that means I'm gonna ga have slow artifacts for a while. Good reaction there, I guess. Wasn't very sure where he was. Almost low health there. Okay, here I did a, um, a recovery, and this is on purpose because I wanted Pius to be closer to this part to hopefully get a fast artifact, but it didn't work. Because <laughs> again, there's a lot of RNG there. And there, I kinda got a recovery, because these artifacts were fast. Just those. <laughs> so that's like the only reason why this wasn't the slowest spice ever. Because I got those two fast artifacts. Two or three, I don't remember. And yeah, that's just good position for Pius. And yeah, that's it. So, all I can say is that with a better Pius, or reasonable Pius, let's say, this could have could have been a sub 37 for sure. I just got trolled there. And I actually saved time. From the previous fight, because the previous fight was even worse. <laughs> Thank you, Bagman. But yeah, um, I don't exactly remember. You're gonna have a take here from um, Pandora, past Pandora. And father would have been proud of you. Uh, I don't know where where it starts. I don't remember. I'm sorry it had to be like this. It's not quite the inheritance I had in mind for you, but there was so little time and so much to do. Goodbye, Alex. I will miss you. But yeah, like um, yeah, Pandora from yesterday will talk to what us. It's like a minute or so. I don't. I don't quite remember. Something happened then. I realized that I was not the only one. That there were many others like me, in other places. At the but yeah, it was. A, it was a good run overall. There's some bad parts. Um, I'm. I'm going to talk about that later. So it comes to pass. Of the three ancients, there is nothing. Okay. My teacher Toga has obliterated the insanity of Zelotar. I'll be back. The madness of Zelotar has overcome the power of Ulialf. The boundless Ulialf has decimated the power of Chaturga. All at once, separate and simultaneous for the universe is made of many time streams many possibilities all in harmonious synchronicity only Mantarok remains slowly dying Mantarok keeper overseer 
Warden of Ancients, Chaos, an entity trapped between the veils of reality and the enchanted stakes that impale its flesh. Unable to rally its guardians, it could rely only on its subtle manipulations of the Royalist family to destroy its enemies. Knowing the nature of the Ancients, it used its pawns to play them against each other, resulting in their mutual annihilation. Now it will languish forever, festering in its tomb, plotting. Yo, what's up? How's it going? So I figured I, I'm gonna do this this part with boys at least. <clears throat> the entire run doesn't have it. Um, but that's gonna be, I mean, when, when you saw, the moment you see this, um, everything will be already explained for sure by my future self, right? Anyways, uh, let's review the run a little bit. I guess um, this run is not perfect by any means. It was just uh, first run completed with the new stuff, basically. Pius is fine. Elia got a couple mistakes, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, Anthony, something happened on Anthony. Um, don't quite remember, but I, I'm pretty sure something happened there. Uh, it's gonna be funny, because <laughs> you'll see this video, just me commenting all the way, but now, like, <clears throat> this Pandora, this past Pandora, just doesn't remember the entire run. Anyway, Kareem, I think th there was some kind of mistake on Kareem. Um, let's see... Max was fine, just average Max, could have been better with uh, Death Cancel and all that. Uh, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay was kind of shitty at the end, it was decent. I, I got, at least I got uh, the button second try though, but still got it because it's kind of important to get it right now. Uh, but yeah, something happened at the end I think. Uh, Paul was a weird one. Paul is a gold, but he's a bad gold. Like, it's a really bad one. I, the only good thing, the only thing that made a gold on Paul was the, uh, the Dead Skip frame perfect trick on the horror. That, that's it. Because apart from that, it was per very shitty. The bone tips were, oh my god, so bad. There was a lot of shitty stuff there. Uh, Roberto was weird. I fucked up the magic in a part, I think. David Hater, oh there you go. The other day we were talking about which character David Hater did. I just read that. Like a little bit like a glance. I'm, I'm gonna review the, the credits again after a long. Um, so Roberto can be better. Peter Peter was fine, I think. I can get better assignments, probably. Uh, and I can get the seven, seven frame trick on the trapper, I guess. Uh, Michael, super shitty end because I move <laughs> after casting uh, the Celta pool, so I lose a ton of seconds at the end. Though the horrors were good, that's the only reason why I like I didn't lose a lot of time on Michael because. Um, I got like 17 seconds horror, it was kind of crazy. I was looking at the timer when I was on the horrors. I, I usually do that to know how good the horrors are. And then Alex was pretty good. I got average horrors. It's just better than the other because the past run was the first one with summon skip. And I got kind of a big, big mistake in a, in a part on that run, the previous one. I think that was the run where I accidentally wasted more magic and I couldn't do a shield immediately, so I lose time. 
Pious, I don't even want to talk about Pious. I don't know how I managed to save time on that Pious. That was the, the, the stupidest <laughs> Pious of my entire life, you know? Got it? Having the slow artifact on the first attack. Like, what the fuck? At least the last ones were fast. I kinda, I did a little bit of manipulation and gained some time with my recovery to try to set that up. It worked at the end. But I'm still kind of mad at that bias. <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't matter. This run can be way better, like way better. But it's gonna be hard to get another one with the new stuff. 